Brand new bandless means a brand new shakeup consistency differences. Let's see how things went for next play. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more OS content. So, wow, fire taking a huge, huge lead over this week. And you know, the only real things that happened to fire where you had Wanted go to one and you had Snake Eyes Ash get knocked down a couple of pillars along the way, which honestly um, was good. I mean, two Snake Eyes Ash, one Wanted. Those are the kind of consistency hits that you want, but Fire was still a huge lead in the Swiss rounds here. And of course, Rescue Ace. You know, Emergency is limited to one there. And I was kind of predicting this. You know, if you start to draw back the consistency on fire, then Rescue Ace kind of wakes up and tries to, you know, recover a little bit of the space here. You cannot forget that set four is one of the craziest things that that deck has going for it. And it will 100% of the time try to take advantage of that. Like, it is very good. Voiceless Voice down here with four as well in your Swiss rounds. Am I surprised about that? No. Nor should you be. Voiceless Voice, most of the OCG thinks it's the best deck in the room, which is understandable here. We also had Melodious coming out of nowhere here. Not really. Melodious with Ostionato. You know, if this deck hits the absolute gas, it does some pretty crazy things. And I do genuinely think that once the TCG does get Melodious, we will kind of see that deck do some pretty interesting things. We also had two Labyrinth down here and then two Snake Eyes. Everything else is going to be a one of here, which is uh, kind of cool. So you had an Emancipator, okay, so standard rock stuff, Dinkatron and Friends, Exosister, uh, looks like Endymion, I'm not really too sure, Trap Tricks, one Runic, one Centurion, one Super Heavy, one Orcist, one Empen and Pals, we also had one Horus, one Inspector Border Stun, a Ubel, a Ritual Beast, and it looks like somebody was trying something out here in the Charmer department, which is actually kind of cool. But overall, I mean, these numbers do what they need to do for the Swiss rounds. This shows that, hey, we knock the consistency of fire down a peg, which allows the rest of the flow chart to kind of invert in here and showcase that these other challengers can actually kind of step into the light here and do something. Now, does this all hold through into top eight? Why, yes, yes, it does. Your top eight here tells the story that you do want to see here. This is where, oh no, Firehead, two in top eight. Oh no, what are we supposed to do? Well, it's not half of the chart. It's not, you know, it's 25%, all right? And it's only two duelists here. Everything else within the sphere of one ofs here is quite interesting, actually. We did have an Orcist pile showing up in here in top eight. Well, that's definitely something I didn't expect to really see, you know, that deck having some huge success here. Melodious, once again, overcoming the curve here. Only one of the, the three managed to make top eight, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Ubel, now, when we get into looking at these lists, you are going to see so much of this new Ubel fusion. It is actually frightening seeing how much that card impacts the meta and how much it changes because not only is the Ubel deck abusing it, so is our Labyrinth list up here. That's right, um, you heard me say that correctly. Uh, we actually ended up having the Horus Control deck do extremely well making its way into top four and actually winning the event was actually Rescue Ace. So uh, definitely wasn't exactly how I thought things would go. Uh, definitely Rescue Ace with Emergency at one being a very consistency or very consistent deck is actually quite nice. Let's pass it over to deck list. So uh, triple bonfire, by the way, yeah, that's uh, that's all you needed to really see. I mean, Pobbler and friends still getting the chance to do uh, things here. I mean, you're still going to be focusing on the same like lines of play that you've been doing. You're going to find different methods of madness to kind of capitalize on whichever advantage tree you need to go down here and be able to do your thing. I do see that this bill was playing droplets for some extra board breaking. The one cross out down there on the side, we do have good old reinforce that everybody seems to really dislike down there in the side deck and the same basic standard of stuff that you want to see, but this build just, you know, no uh, no real craziness here. Still doing the wanted package, you know, you're, you're going to be doing that because you still want to get to the sinful spoils package to get the hydrant up and running. And by the way, 
only two hydrants. And to the people that are like, oh, you know, you need three. Not with this level of, you know, power at your, you know, fingertips to be able to filter through and get things going for the deck. So, cool. Good to see Rescue Ace doing its thing. Ah, second place, you bell. All right, well, you know, the new fusion giving you the ability to do this massive contact and then just go through these crazy lines of play. Yeah, that's, we've been pretty used to seeing what this deck can actually do. Like, this deck's board breaking is so crazy to me. Especially, you know, you only need one Unchained Shavara in here. Uh, they're not even playing the trap card for this build. It's just like, hey, you know, we can go down the standard lines of play. We're doing one of the Super Ebel Fusion and then three of the contacts. You can kind of do your thing, but... Right now, it looks like a lot of decks don't necessarily have the ability to counteract what's going on with this. And I do think that's actually quite interesting, um, given, you know, what we could see here. But this is very optimized. I, I quite like this. That U-Bell Fusion, going forward, is going to be such a menace. Like, the card is so absolutely broken. All right, now, hey, what's this? Is this, is this Unchained? Playing Ubel cards? Why, well, yes, it is. This is what we were talking about here. That Ubel fusion. Now, suddenly, Labyrinth can now take advantage of this. Hmm. That's a. Uh, it's not exactly what I want to be seeing right now. In my uh, in my crazy lineups here, giving some real consideration to this, and also you know you have the triple uh, creepy goat laughs in here. You have the also oh, only one transaction rollback. First of all. Granted, Transaction Rollback is a very powerful card. I just, I think a lot of these builds have definitely chosen to forego it because it it, it can be a little bit of a dead draw. And I mean, you also got to make room in here for, you know, the U-Bell package so you can do your thing. I actually wonder how the uh, the U-Bell mirror felt for this, um, considering the fact, you know, this deck doesn't really have the Nightmare Pains and things that the other build really has going for it. If those if these two builds had the Clash, it had to be the funniest thing in the world. Next up is our other top four challenger. And yes, it is the Christia Turbo Pile. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm very happy to see that the build has kind of taken a, a step away from playing a little bit more of the, the, the standardized madness. Cause you know, like the vanities are good cards, but being able to deploy Christia on like a 2800 body is actually pretty good. You also do see that this build extended all the way up into the triple solemn judgment department. So you can do your thing. We're only playing the one rainbow bridge of salvation in here, which I do think is also good. You do have the double super poly for the board breaking, only double foolish burial. And then you're relying on things like trade-ins, the triple gold, basically all the filtering cards to get through the terrible Horus cards. And it's a three, one, one ratio on the Horus stuff. So that's all pretty straightforward. Your side deck is going to give you the anti-meta power you need. And yes, we are playing a seeker village down there. Uh, I can only imagine being able to pull off a seeker village lock with this. And then we have this Ubel pile with Horus cards and Orcus and all of this. And this is, once again, we've gotten to the point in terms of U-Bell cards where this deck is going to turn into a problem. All right, like, if, if you're seeing U-Bell being splashed in one, two different decks and have its own version of the deck out here, um, that might actually be an issue. I, uh, I'm very curious to know for future card design, if they're actually going to uh, try to do something about that. But alas, you're using the standard Orcus package to be able to filter through and do your standardized plays. Uh, Horus package will facilitate getting rid of those dead cards for you. And I can't believe that they're getting away with just playing five U-Bell cards in the main deck here. Like, that's actually horrific. <sighs> That's so crazy to actually see that. And then, we also had a Ritual Beast deck back here. This build didn't do too spicy, but it was one of the ones that was posted. And we haven't had a lot of a, a, a lot of showcasing for what you can do with Ritual Beast. It's kind of like, hey, you know, it showed up, it did its thing, and then it just kind of went to sleep after a while. I don't necessarily think it's a terrible thing that, you know, we've kind of not had the chance to see this deck do its thing, but it's definitely been one of the more, I would say, interesting builds to kind of showcase what you can do out here. And, you know, people still want to play Triple Steeds. Wild, wild, wild. So what do you guys think about the break, or breakdown for next play this week? Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons.
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.